are listening to Stories from Palestine podcast, a podcast recorded in Palestine and about Palestine. My name is Crystal. I am originally from the Netherlands and I am married to a Palestinian. We live in Beit Safafa between Jerusalem and Bethlehem and we run Singer Cafe and Al Jisser Bar in Beit Sahur. Before moving to Palestine in 2013, I worked as a teacher and tour guide in the Netherlands. I have a degree in history and in tour guiding and many years of tour guiding experience. Due to the COVID pandemic, tourism in Palestine came to a complete halt and that's why I started Stories from Palestine podcast in August 2020. This is the second year of the podcast with every week on Monday a new episode about the history and heritage of Palestine as well as the reality of life today. I hope you will enjoy today's episode. This is the third episode of a series on artisans in Palestine. I am making these episodes to support Handmade Palestine. And if you want to know more about them, you can go back two episodes and listen to what they are doing. They do not only support local artisans to sell their handicrafts, but they also plant trees in Palestine. And they have a piece of land outside of Ramallah where they have an eco project. So check that out. Last weekend, they organized an artisan's market in Ramallah at La Vie Café. And La Vie Café is run by Morgan and her husband, who are both also the initiators of the Arboretum. And they try to sustain their project with the sales through Handmade Palestine. This artisan's market was the first one since COVID. And it also marks the start of their crowdfunding campaign. They really need some budget to do more online marketing and to spread the word so that more people from around the world will actually visit their website and buy the products. And I was invited to come and record for this podcast episode. It was impossible time-wise to talk to all the different artisans. So I recommend that you visit the website handmadepalestine.com to see the complete offer of handicrafts. But this episode will give you a good impression and really the artisans speak with so much love and passion about their work that I'm sure you will enjoy listening. With the mosque in the background, I'm here at the artisans market of Handmade Palestine in Ramallah at La Vie Café. I just arrived, I'm just going around browsing a little bit and I'm uh, standing here at one of the booths where I can see beautiful straps that you can attach to your bag and I see a yoga mat so you can even use them to hold up your yoga mat. Can you tell me more about you and these products? Hi, I'm Sara. I'm a yoga instructor here in Ramallah, which is why you see the yoga mats. I started off making yoga straps to hold my yoga mat. And then it eventually extended into bag straps. And here you see designs from the red Kashmir to the kafia. And now I have this new embroidered design that are made in Gaza. I started off gravitating towards the red Kashmir because being a Palestinian American, that always reminded me of my city and that older generation of women who often wear that material with their traditional dress. And then eventually kafia became a part of the group, which I loved. I wasn't crazy about the idea initially, but when I saw how they were coming out, I thought this is actually a great way to get the younger generation to incorporate the kithia in their style, aside from wearing it on your head and neck. You could wear it with, if you're a yogi, your yoga mat, or you could wear it with any bag of your choice that could easily clip onto. And these that you are bringing them from Gaza, can you tell more about them? Who makes them and how do you get them here? This is actually a very special project that I haven't even launched yet. This, I was working with the women in Gaza. I just got in touch with them through word of mouth. We only met through Instagram, to be honest with you. We've been keeping in touch through there. And I asked if she could make this design that you see, the embroidery, is called menagel. This is a specific design that you'll often find on the traditional thobe. Usually it frames the sides of the traditional thobe. And I love this design. As you can see, I'm more into the bold colors because I think it just 
really defines the women of Palestine, just bold, beautiful, and brave. So I often gravitate towards these colors. And this was especially important to me because during the time that Gaza was recently under attack, I would always check in with the ladies there in Gaza to ensure that they were safe. Every day I would wake up and check in on her to see how she was doing. She said, you know, alhamdulillah, we're, we're taking it one day at a time and just working on the straps right now is what's keeping us occupied and, you know, our minds are off our realities right now. So this is a very special project to me that I'm happy to share with the world and share their story. And where do you sell them if you're not on a bazaar? Do you have a shop or is there a place where people can physically or online buy them? Online, you can find some various sites. Of course, there's Handmade Palestine, Palestinian Hustle, and Knoll Collective. I'm also being sold in Dubai with Homegrown Palestine. And if you're in Spain, the UNRWA. Oh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> so all the listeners from Spain, you know where to go. And so you didn't grow up here. No, I'm actually a Palestinian-American. I grew up in Ohio. And it's funny because growing up in the States, I always felt that I was too Palestinian. And it wasn't until I moved into the Middle East that I realized I'm a lot more American than I thought. But being here in Palestine has helped me embrace this Palestinian side of me that I didn't know existed and I didn't know I would like it as much as I do. So it's been a great experience these past seven years. Can I ask you where your family is originally from in Palestine? Elbira. Elbira, Palestine, which is the sister city to Ramallah. And do you live there right now? I do, with my husband and three kids. Oh, wow. Are they here? Not right now, but they'll probably show up in a couple hours, hopefully. Okay, <laughs> nice. Thank you so much Thank and good you. luck. Thank you so much. I'm just browsing around and um, I came here to a table that is full of products made of leather in all kinds of colors. There are bags and wallets and even, I think these are to put your laptop? Laptop and document holder, 13 inches. And this leather, it comes from where? It comes from across Palestine, uh, Gaza, mainly made in Hebron. Cow and goat leather. And this is a, a company called Jild. And Jild means leather in Arabic? Yes, it is Jild, uh, Jild leather. It means leather in English. Yes, Jild is leather. Yeah. And this is a company owned by a family or is it a cooperative? It's not a company. I wouldn't call it a company. We're a couple of friends who came up with the idea of making uh, a small wallet of leather and uh, our friends and family loved it. So we began to make other items and it went viral kind of. So yeah, I wouldn't call it a company though. Yeah. So how would you say you distinguish yourselves from other leather producers in Palestine? I don't think other leather producers made many items. Oh, they don't have a variety of items. I think we have everything a customer would want or need, from wallets to card holders to laptop and document holder, tobacco pouches, card holders. Even we have passport holders. So I think we have everything. And do you also do personalized items if somebody wants to order something for his company that they can have their logo on it or something like that? Yes, yes, we do. And uh, we can also make customized uh, bags or wallets if you want. Yeah. And is Hebron especially known for leather or is it just by chance? Hebron is known for leather. Yeah. Manufacturing of leather, mainly it happens in Hebron. And do you guys also do the processing of the leather or you get it from people who, who do that? Do you know anything about the process? I kind of do uh, a little. The leather goes through a lot of process from coloring to waxing so it can be ready for the final consumption. And it, it comes to us uh, with the colors we want and we cut it and we make the, the wallets or the bags So yeah, it goes like through a lot of process and it comes to us so we can make the products. And everything is handmade? Yes, everything is handmade. We cut the leather, we design. If you can see these stitches, yeah, we make everything. Wow. Yeah, yeah it's all handmade. Yeah, you can see, you can see that it's handmade and it's done with a lot of care and love. So where do you sell your products? We have our uh, 
Instagram online. We have selling points across Palestine, in Jerusalem, in Al Sunbula, and in Yabuz, in Beit Lahem. I can't really remember where in Beit Lahem. Be singer, yeah. Ramallah, be Levi, and be Mustauda. And uh, we have a lot of selling points. If anyone would uh, ask us on Instagram, we would answer. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and so on Handbait Palestine, they can also find your products and they can order there. Thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi. Hello. Are we live? Yeah, we're live. Oh, we're live. <laughs> Hi, I'm Crystal. And, uh, talk to them. Oh, talk to them. Hi, <laughs> I'm Crystal, and uh, my husband is Palestinian, and I've just lived here for the last, oh, maybe 10 years now, and started a podcast called Stories from Palestine. And today I am recording also live here at the bazaar. And if you want to listen to the stories from Handmade Palestine and the Artisans, you can tune in to Stories from Palestine podcast on any podcast player. And you can go to the website storiesfrompalestine.info. And I just talked here to this lovely lady who is from Jild. Hi. Hi. Mama, I'm going to sit here. Yeah, I'm happy with my Louise. You think you're Arabic? Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, it's not that you're a little bit. تحدثنا لانه انا معلمه فبعرف احكي مع الصغار يعني فهذا هذا القصد كله آه يعني وانت من وين؟ انا من سلوان او من سلوان طبعا من القدس كمان وعندي مشروع بتحكي بدك احكي بالعربي؟ Uh, I can you speak, speak in English. English. Uh, then I can, we can also. I'm recording this for a podcast, so then hey. it's good. I'm I'm from Silwan. I have a project called Gallery Zaina for Oriental Art. It's a, a big gallery in Albire, and I love to join bazaars because it's uh, I think an effective way to market my whole project, which is basically promoting the Arab, Islamic, Oriental and Palestinian concept of art, be it in jewelry, be it in textiles, be it in carpets, be it in furniture. So I carry all of this in my gallery. And when I am at bazaars like this one, I take jewelry because people are interested in jewelry, some textiles. I'm a designer of both jewelry and Palestinian clothing that fits your daily life. I'm wearing a vintage dress here. It's a dress that I bought as a, in one of the second-hand shops. And then I put Palestinian embroidery on it. And it's a, not only a warm dress, gorgeous dress, but it's also addressing the beauty of Palestine and promoting the beauty of Palestinian art. I design also new uh, Palestinian dresses. A woman who wears my dresses can go to a reception, can go to work, or can go to a supermarket. It is promoting Palestinian art that can enter your house, can enter your market, can enter your event, and be part of your life like your jeans or a blazer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You look wonderful and very Thank colorful you. also. Thank you. I also love your jacket. The jacket is from Samarkand. I wish that you would travel to Samarkand. It's a beautiful, beautiful center of Arab and Islamic art with calligraphy and with all kinds of geometric designs, Arabic writing on beautiful graves. It's in Uzbekistan, and the country prides itself over its textile industry. This is an antique uh, Samarkand textile that was made into a modern jacket, wow. which fits my concept. Bring all old, colorful concepts and integrate it into your everyday clothing. Then it becomes logical yeah wonderful thank you come so on, much we'll stall. come to your come to, to your table <laughs> here i have a gorgeous antiquish amber necklace this is palestinian amber this is yemenite amber this is afghani gold sheets on rubber and this is antique palestinian silver bowls These two are Iraqi antique corals. You make a gorgeous necklace of this, and the whole time you're touching it, you feel the presence of Iraq, of Afghanistan, of Yemen and Palestine. Wow, and from where did you bring these? 
I traveled a lot and I travel a lot. I love to travel to the region. I love my I'm my my pan Arab environment and uh, we're so rich in culture and we're so rich in making things that it is high time that we celebrate it for use in our daily life rather than museums which are attracting the elite. I want my stuff to be felt first and foremost by Palestinians. The West appreciates the East. We know this. We know this from uh, the paintings of Orientalists, which are now uh, uh, decorating the walls of museums worldwide. But these are things that the ordinary Arab, Palestinian, Middle Eastern is not able to see or appreciate. It is high time that we bring this art to our own people. When a woman comes to me and says, tell me about this necklace, suddenly she feels as if she has traveled to these places. When I bring this, this is an, the idea, the concept is beautiful. This is an antique, it's an old idea. Men in Palestine would get a gift from their brides-to-be of a cigarette box. She would embroider it, then she would wrap it like this, do it like this mm -hmm. and include it in the trousseau, in the chest, which uh, includes all her beautiful embroidery. I managed to get this from a woman who inherited quite a bunch from her husband and they're beautiful. The material is nice. Today, I decided to promote this yeah. out of all ideas, you yeah. know, and I've already sold some just from the concept. Yeah. Usually, mm, Palestinian men do not have any embroidery tossed upon them. But this is an amazing male gift for somebody who appreciates art. Yeah, I can see that you also made uh, masks. face masks for yes. the against the coronavirus. Yes, and people buy it and people love it. Here is the kufiya. It's the Palestinian identity. It's the Arab identity. People love it. People love this. So I'm, I'm selling these in big numbers. Then I make this in my gallery as well. The Ottomans were in Palestine for quite some time. And so their coins are very much appreciated. Before the shekel was introduced to the Palestinian areas, people dealt with ismaliye, which means an Ottoman coin. So anything that's precious goes back to the Ottoman times. So we make simple necklaces, cornelian and Ottoman coin. Silver is an extremely important material in our culture. So put any of the beautiful stones and you make something very beautiful. This is not just a Palestinian stole here. This is pan-Arabism, yeah. which I'm very proud of. Gaza in its beautiful mirror. But we try to bring to this market things that others don't have. Mm. Uh, and calligraphy is my main promoter. Amulets. Every Palestinian woman always, or Arab woman, believes in having her, her hand or her coffee cup red or wears an amulet that protects her from the evil eye. So promote jewelry which has amulets. Here is a khamsa, and this khamsa is beautiful, beautifully done, connected to an onyx, makes a gorgeous piece of jewelry, and at the same time makes whoever wears it comfortable because they're protected with this beautiful amulet. Be it Arab or Jewish, they believe in the khamsa as a protective amulet. So the khamsa, it means five, and five it's the, the hand with the five it's fingers. The hand of yeah. And the hand of Fatima, the symbol behind it, is protects you from the evil eye. Men's rings, very important. We introduce writing on men's ring. Here it says ishq, passion. Passion. So usually it's exactly opposite a man's character. Give them what's opposite their character and they will love it. Here is haq, haq, justice. What more can you put on a beautiful ring? And Arab men love to wear rings. And they look at Nasrallah as he delivers his speeches on Al-Manar television, and he's wearing the gorgeous agat and beautiful rings, and they imitate him. In Islam, a man is allowed to wear a ring, but 
they don't encourage necklaces. Yeah. Here is another khamsa. Hmm? Here is a Palestinian snack. This is called a snack, a silver ball that decorated the necks of Palestinian women who wore the hat in the Beit Lahim area. Here it decorates this beautiful agate necklace. Wow. What else can you introduce to the people? Rich culture that we are living through here that just needs to be appreciated. Here is a beautiful piece from the Quran. Some people like it because it's Quranic. Other people like it because it's Arabic writing. Oh. Arabic writing. Marhaba habibti. Ahlan wa sahlan. I want to ask my daughter what are the things that she really loves from this table? The ring, huh? The rings. The rings. Yes, I showed her rings yeah. earlier. I showed Louise when you were busy. I told her, Louise, have a look at some of the tiny rings which can be made smaller. Look at this. Snake. You know what the snake is? <laughs> also keeps the evil eye away. al hayya haya hayya haya Life. Brings life. <laughs> We've seen a lot of jewelry so far, and we've seen some people with accessories and uh, leather. And here I'm at the table where I see textile, t-shirts and bags. Can you tell me a bit about yourself and your product? Yeah, so my name is Bassam Suez. I'm from Ramallah. We are Qubtan. Uh, it means captain in Arabic. This is our logo. We're hoping to create the first 100% Palestinian uh, clothing brand. So we do everything from sewing, from cutting the shirts and printing. All the designs are our designs. The designs are uh, basically from young people to young people because we and my partner, we are uh, young people. So we have a bit of irony in our designs. We have a bit of black comedy from our situation here in Palestine. So we have a design called the Palestinian Navy Seals. We don't have a Navy Seals. We don't have a sea to have a Navy Seals. We have design called Canned Sea. Someday we will buy the water of the sea in cans like pickles and olives. And we have the famous design, uh, the Jericho International Airport. The irony behind that is we can't travel from Palestine to anywhere only through Jordan. So basically Jericho. So we hope one day we can have an airport here in Jericho. And we have another side of our designs. It's the, the Palestinian design. So we have a made in Palestine design with our olive trees and our olive branches. We have the coin, the currency of Palestine from our perspective. So it has the capital, the oranges from Yaffa and the olive tree that Palestine is famous of. We have a lot of Palestinian designs focusing on Palestine. The cities of Palestine, this is our famous design. It's uh, in Kufic type, it's in Kufic font. The t-shirt has 24 cities in Palestine, in 48 area and uh, West Bank and Gaza, all written in the Arabic Kufic type. So that's Qubtan uh, in a nutshell. What is this bus on this t-shirt? So this is an old bus. Before uh, 48, there was an actual route for buses and travelers to go from Haifa to Beirut. And from Haifa to all the cities we have on the, the shirt, to Damascus, Amman, Cairo, and Jerusalem. And there's another one, but we didn't put it on the design because we want to put six capitals, basically. And the other one is Baghdad. So there was an actual bus that goes from Haifa here in Palestine to all these cities, which is something we can't do now. I can't go to Jerusalem now yeah. in, my, in my car. So that's the uh, design. Here we are at a stand where I can see the beautiful traditional Palestinian embroidery, the tatris. And there are many different kind of items. Can you introduce yourself and your product? Yes, I'm Seema Mizrawi from Ramallah, citizen. I'm living here. Actually, we created our project in Yuli, embroidery joined with original leather and some without original leather. We're trying to make the old tradition designs for a new color for cheerful designs to match the old taste of the women and the men as well. As you see, we have wallets here for men and wallets for women, belts and laptop covers, handbags, 
in different designs. So you can choose whatever you like, also for the iPhone. Because in the past, they don't used to have iPhones. They used to knock doors. <laughs> they used to knock doors. But now we have facilities to reach people through WhatsApp, through Facebook, through the iPhone. So we have a cover for it. So it's a new heritage for me. And I am glad for that. I know that originally each region had its own type of embroidery, its own colors and its own patterns. Do you mix between all the patterns or do you even create new ones? Uh, no, actually, I'm combining all Palestinian designs. We have from Belsheva, we have from uh, Ramallah, we have from uh, Hebron, we have from so many different places. Because in Ramallah, people in the past, they used to use the red 816. I remember the number even for the DMC. But it's all one color. Okay, fine, it's very good and it's very talented. And I'm very proud of Palestinian Ramallah embroidery. But it's done. You know, there's no cheerful colors like from the rainbows, from the trees, from the flowers, from every, everything you like, cheerful colors. You can, it's a whole world full of colors. So why not to put it in our embroidery? I see that you have here quite a lot of purple. Where did the purple you come from? Actually, in the past, King Solomon used to bring uh, Haron's uh, people from Lebanon to make his tent in the past. And Orjuan, they call it Orjuani, the Fushi Zahri, El Ghamek, it's a very popular, they make it from seashell. From seashell, they boil it, they make the color. In the last century, it was so popular. And they call it Phoenician. al Phoenician, it's all the community. They make this Orjuan color from the seashell. They boil it for three days and they keep it and to get the color. And they mix the threads or the ropes or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, that's a beautiful story. We actually, at the Bible College, where I studied the tour guide program, we learned about the Phoenicians, that Phoenician, it comes from that, and that they are using the, it's kind of a mollusk, that they are boiling, and from there, and the purple color, because it took so much time to extract the color, and you needed a lot of these mollusks in order to make that, it was very expensive. Yeah, very expensive and very unique. Yeah. Very unique for me. When I see it, I remember King Salman <laughs> and his tent full of turquoise and fushi and whatsoever. It's in my imagination, but I hope one day in the future we live and we see what's real in the past. Yeah. Heritage, their heritage, their houses, their... Uh, yeah. I'm very proud of that. Yeah. Well, your table is definitely one of the most colorful ones. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you very Thank much. Thank you so much, dear. Thank you. I really appreciate it. So we're here at a table that is full of beautiful ceramics and it's unlike anything I have seen so far in Palestine. It's not the typical ones that you see from Hebron and this is made by Rania. Rania, can you introduce yourself and your product? Yes, uh, my name is Rania Makhlou from Haifa. I'm a ceramicist. I'm working in this field like since 11 years in Haifa. I have my own studio in the downtown, in the Asian town of Haifa. And basically I use very simple glazes with glazing my ceramic. And also I produce the glazes in my studio from local material. I used to use also black and gray mud. It's a local mud of the occupied Gulan Heights. And I make some experiments in order to know how to use the ceramics in, in, in practice. My inspiration is from uh, like the nature around me and basically from colors that surround me in my surrounding. Yeah, the colors are generally, as I see, they are 
lighter. Light, there yeah. is pink, yeah. there is blue, there is green. It's definitely natural colors. And maybe because you are close to the sea, you have more blue. Oh, maybe. <laughs> I didn't thought of that. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Voila. Because we don't see that a lot here on this side of the wall, let's yeah. say. So it was something it's a, that struck it's me. It's taste also, I think. Yeah. And it's also the material that I use. I really like to experiment with cobalt and with copper that uh, those materials are available in my area so I I use them because they are very local also you know maybe because of that so you have a place where you do this you have an oven yes. and then you prepare the all materials by hand you shape it by hand yes. you bake it yeah. you glaze it by hand yeah I work on the wheel yeah some of my stuff are made with wheel throwing and the other with hand building you can see I prepare like candle holders with carving techniques everything I do here is not very strict and uh, symmetric because I believe that first of all I try to be symmetric and it's a very big challenge to every potter But I do give myself sometimes excuses, you know, and my excuses come from the Japanese philosophy that its name is wabi-sabi. And wabi-sabi talks about like uh, accept the, yeah, accept the zubat. <laughs> perfection in the not perfection, in the not perfect things that I do. So I try like to be, to believe in this, yani to produce more uh, creatively. What I love about what you're saying just now is that it shows diversity. Each piece is different from the other piece, oh, and oh. that's the same with nature and human beings. Oh, right? The explanation is very nice. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. What, what if every person was exactly the same? What if every oh, tree was oh, the same? It will be boring. So, When I look on your table, I don't feel that I'm looking in a shop, these modern shop, commercial, capitalist shops, where everything is just more of the same. Each piece, I know it was made with love, with your hands, and each one is a little bit different from the other one. So touching what you, what you are saying, so touching. And this is really true, because this is what I, this is what I feel while working. And I told Mice, my friend, yesterday that, I really like what I do. My wish is to sleep in the studio for a week and just work and not see anybody and just to produce and to... Like, yesterday I was glazing and I was... Uh, I stood up in front of the shelves, two hours, just looking at the shelves and thinking about the colors, what colors feel I want to do. And I didn't glaze anything. I just go, I went home. I didn't do anything. While, while I was uh, taking a shower yesterday, my husband asked me, oh, you are talking to yourself? I said, yes, I'm thinking about the glazes and what I want to glaze, but I can't. Like I was one week, full one week, was like so confused. Like I was thinking what I want to glaze. And it's a kind of خلص, يعني, uh, inspiration. It comes, you glaze it. يعني, I have lots of things on the shelves that I didn't have glazes for a month. And I think that خلص, it will come, the time will come and I will glaze that. It. But it's a kind of inspiration, of a mood. I think that's a wonderful idea to spend a whole week. It's like a retreat, a meditation. Yeah. Just you and your, uh, and your produce. You know, I'm going to get one of your cups. And then when I drink coffee every morning, there is a special connection between you and me. Thank because you. that's one thing you made with your hands. And that's something I will drink coffee under my olive tree. Shukran, shukran. I appreciate that. Shukran. These are very nice. Oh, they're from her. And I lost one, and she, she gave me her place. I didn't lose it, but it's new, so it fell, and it was broken, and I kept the pieces, because I didn't want to lose them in case I don't get the replacement I wanted. Like, And she was so kind, and she gave me another one. Yeah, they are beautiful, gorgeous. <laughs> Morgan, I'm in your kitchen. How are you doing? Oh my God! Hi, Chris. How are you? You are busy, yeah. You're working hard. Busy morning for us. Wonderfully busy. We're really grateful. 
Yeah, what are you preparing? Um, right now I'm doing futura arabi, which is eggs. It's kind of the breakfast that you would make for your family, right? So some lebane, which is like a spread, and homemade hummus, some eggs, a little bit of salad with some fresh taboon bread. Great. And what else do you have? Because you you made something special for today, oh, right? Yeah. Our menu today is inspired by the land of Palestine. And by that, I don't mean traditional food. I literally mean the, the food that is grown in this land. So we've made Romania, which is... Uh, a, a, <laughs> I love your face. Are you going to be eating? <laughs> I have never had it and I've oh. always wanted to eat it. That's so funny because two of the dishes I've never had and I put them on the menu because I've always wanted to try them. So <laughs> Romania, the mushroom is over there. Sorry, we're cooking. Uh, Romania, which is um, the green or brown lentil made with smoked eggplant. And then we've also made irkak, rikak or rishtaya. And this is a red lentil that's with a homemade ajin or dough made into uh, noodles. It's amazing. Oh. And lastly, we have uh, mjadra, which is very common in houses, but we've yeah. made it with burgol because yeah. wheat is, you know, the crop of Palestine. Basically, olives and wheat, those are our crops. So a lot of the food here, um, all of the food here was originally inspired by what we grew. Obviously, that's how it came about. So that's the menu for today. Wow. And when is it ready? It's been ready since 10 a.m. Oh, so I can order. <laughs> so let's start eating. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Good luck. Majdi, yeah. we are a few hours into the bazaar. Yes. How is it going? Very well, yeah. I'm so glad to see many people coming to support the artisans and shop their handicrafts. You just went live also. Yeah. Do you have any idea how many people saw that? Or that's not something you can know? Um, any mishkhtir na sa... <laughs> just say like <laughs> lots of hundreds of thousands of people <laughs> yeah <laughs> a few thousand people <laughs> I'm now entering into La Vie Cafe this is the cafe that Morgan and her husband are running and where they have prepared a special menu for today and it's quite full I think that almost every table is taken people are drinking and eating and it's a very nice atmosphere you are a visitor to the artisan market yes. and what do you think of it I love these kinds of markets. I think it's very important to buy local and support the local economy. And when things are available, we should always buy local. So I'm glad that the, these markets are happening in Palestine. And you are a regular customer of La Vie, or you just came now only for the bazaar? No, we used to come to La Vie a lot, actually, back in the day. And my um, my friends, we volunteer and organize a farmer's market. So La Vie used to also come to the farmer's market. So it's a small community, to be honest. So Do you think that uh, the uh, how the COVID uh, impacted the artisans oh yeah definitely I mean without having um, markets open and uh, you know the ability to do these kinds of markets it totally affected local producers even with our farmers market last year when we still had closure we couldn't run the farmers market and the farmers were producing and they had no place to sell because you know our market is not doesn't support local producers but eventually we were able to open and they were happy but uh, yeah totally uh, so I'm happy these events are going on right now and you are a Ramallah citizen yeah well I'm from Elbira actually but okay. yeah <laughs> it's different yeah. it's a different place thank you so much <laughs> Morgan, you, you have great cakes here. I know. <laughs> What else to say? I mean, Do you make them yourself? Oh, no, we have this incredible baker named Marisabel. She's actually Bolivian, married to a Palestinian like us. And she is the baker who can pretty much do anything and everything. We're very lucky. Wow. So people can also order from her cakes? Yeah, they can order from me. <laughs> and she bakes them. She is uh, very loyal. So, wow. <laughs> But she does incredible cheesecake. She also does chocolate. Today we have a gluten-free vegan chocolate cake. We have a salted caramel cheesecake with candied pecan. We have a lemon curd cheesecake as well. And a mango coconut. Coconut tres leches. Wow, yeah. that sounds amazing. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 
So this was a really wonderful visit to the Artisan Bazaar at La Vie Café in Ramallah. And I have just ordered a plate of Romania and my daughter ordered from the chocolate cake. So we're going to enjoy that and we're going to leave you to it right now. You can go to the website handmadepalestine.com and see all the different artisan products that they sell there online. Order now so that you have them on time for your Christmas gifts. Thank you for listening to Stories from Palestine. If you enjoy the podcast, then here are several things you can do to support the show. Tell your friends about the podcast. Share some of the social media posts on Instagram or Facebook. Start following the YouTube channel. You can also hear the podcast audio there. And soon I will start uploading videos. Sign up for the email list so that you get a reminder with a clickable link to the new podcast episode. And in the future, you will be updated about programs and trips that I will start to organize. And of course, you can donate to help me pay for hosting the podcast and the website and all the related recording costs. It's the only source of income I have at the moment, so you can imagine how much I appreciate every cup of coffee or falafel sandwich that you buy me on the Kofi platform. All the links that you need can be found in the show notes and on the website storiesfrompalestine.info. That's it. I hope you will tune in again next week. <laughs>